Hello guys, and welcome to the Penny Podcast. I'm Andres Pear, I'm in 12th grade, and I'm the Kapo Student Media Web Producer. I'm Yasha Vula, I'm in 12th grade, and I'm a staff writer. If this is your first time tuning in, the Penny Podcast is a weekly podcast that incorporates entertainment and interview elements. However, this week's episode is once again a little different as we'll be focusing on how life has changed for seniors in our community due to the coronavirus, aka COVID-19 outbreak. Please excuse her sound quality as we are recording this episode over Zoom, the all too famous video conference platform nowadays. On last week's episode, I mentioned a myriad of events which were either canceled or postponed due to the outbreak, one of which being Capo High School's prom, which was slated for April 5th. Prom is synonymous with high school. It is widely considered to be the happiest night for a senior. The friends, food, and music all culminate to create one final memory. For a lot of people, prom, or senior year in general, is a goodbye to their childhood, to the people they spent so many years around, to the buildings and at times the city or town which raised them. Nearly every student in the nation has been affected due to the outbreak. We asked two (laughs) seniors to come on the show and share what senior years means to them and how the outbreak affected their overall senior experience. Please tell us your name and your favorite color. Oh, I'm going to go first. No, you go first. Okay, my name's Tabby Tudor, and my favorite color is blue and black. Okay, my name is Imama Saria, and my favorite color is pink and purple. All right. Okay, so let's start this discussion uh, off by being <clears throat> open with each other. Uh, how have you been feeling since, the, since spring break ended and, like, and went into quarantine? Depression. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know, right? <laughs> It's honestly been the worst. Like, the first week when, you know, actual spring break ended and, you know, we had the extension kind of thing so teachers could prepare, you know, moving stuff online if that was necessary. Oh, my gosh. I was just sitting in my bed just doing nothing, and I was just like, this is the peak of boredom in my life. I don't even know. It was like like worse in the summer because your parents aren't letting you out or anything because during spring break, I was in Florida the entire time. And so when I came back, literally when I walked into the house, my mom pretty much made me strip and change right away. She was doing laundry and she was like, here, change your clothes right now. You're just in the airport. You're contaminated. I was like, oh, my God, mom. And mm-hmm. so I was like, you're over exaggerating, but it is what it is. I'll change. And then, of course, later in the week, it gets worse. And, you know, parents become more strict as more news is being released and such. Mm-hmm. And. It's just, it's, oh my God, it's been crazy. But like, I'm going insane not being able to see people and just hang out with people in person. I'm a very like, maybe affectionate, I don't know, where it's like, I just want to be able to hug people freely. Like, (laughs) if you're one of my friends and I see you in the halls, I just want to give you a hug. But now like, a hug is like a weapon, which is so crazy. Mama, (laughs) tell me your story. Okay, well, um... So basically, spring break, um, I was super excited for spring break because my cousins were going to come. And then I realized that, oh, my God, this is so dangerous. They're coming in this time where in like China and everywhere, like not in the United States. It wasn't as bad then, but still it was like bad over like the the oceans, you know. So like I was scared because they were coming, but I was also very excited because I haven't seen them for three years. And so. I, they came and we actually went places that were pretty populated, which was pretty stupid of us, to be honest. Like we went to Sea World and um, the River Rock in San Antonio, but um, it, they were here. So like they <laughs> have never been to the United States. So we had to kind of take them places and it was very dangerous to go to these places, obviously. But after they left, it was just like very like, I was alone, like, I was lonely, like, I was, like, I'm a very extroverted person, so not seeing people was just, like, so horrible for me, so I would find myself, like, FaceTiming friends, or, like, just, like, constantly talking to people, because if I didn't, then I would literally go insane, and so this quarantine was, like, very unexpected, and it was weird, for sure, for a lot of people, because we were never expecting this to happen at all. Mm Mm-hmm. I love how everyone just start like the week after spring break, everyone just signed a petition and everything about extension, like break extension. And oh, like yeah. now everyone oh, are yeah, just straight that. complaining. 
Yeah, for, for sure. We Sorry. we just we just thought it was just going to be that week, and then everything's going to ba- go back to normal. And we needed that extra break, you know. Mm-hmm. But, yeah. but now it's just too much. <laughs> yeah. Now it's like now they're like after that week, we found out that we had like more extension. We would have online classes, and we were like, "What the heck?" Like, I we were never expecting this to happen. Yeah, that was like the but moment hey. people started to take it seriously when that petition mm-hmm. came out, and it was like, "Oh, yeah, wait, like hold up." <laughs> And then, I don't know, because okay. I, I felt like Sorry. that week was, like, the build-up for that, if you know what I mean. Yes. The week was mm-hmm. essentially the build-up for uh, more extensions and just teachers, like, figuring out how to online school. Yeah, but, like, going into the first week of online school, it's, you're like, oh, my God, I'm tired of this. I don't have any motivation. Like, I do not want to do this right now, which has mm-hmm. definitely hit me really hard. I, like, binge worked all on that first Friday. Um, but, like, going into the second week, and hearing more, you know, government updates and everything, more extensions, whatever. You're just like, this is real. Like, it's hitting now. Like, we thought this was serious and like, oh, yeah, on the other side of the world. But then New York being the epicenter and like how crazy that's getting over there, that they're going to like sports venues and, you know, makeshift hospitals and soccer fields and like hotels, all that kind of stuff around the U.S. And you're like, Dallas is just getting there. Like, we're just starting the like – going up the roller coaster like we're not even close to the peak like new york is already like hitting hard like it's crazy over there and i feel so bad for them and everyone there like my um my aunt and her uh grandkid that uh lives with her and her husband they're in a small apartment in um the bronx and just outside of where it's pretty bad and she's like she's a social worker so she's an essential worker so she only leaves the house purely to go to work and so she has to have like gloves mask everything and it's it's crazy intense over there but on a more lighthearted note uh what pieces of media have been keeping y'all company as of late any specific shows games or books netflix (laughs) (laughs) i mean pretty much yeah just move yeah netflix movies Ooh, one thing that i discovered or like i had been hearing about for like a few weeks was netflix party and so i finally yeah i finally tried that out um and it's a chrome extension and i tried that out and i had two of my other friends i like forced them to download it to try it out to see if it worked and we literally binge watched tiger king (laughs) yeah yeah that's like the new thing. It, they came out at a perfect time. Everyone's watching it. <laughs> For real. But it's like the quality content where you're like, oh, my God, like crazy people. But you're like, oh, my God, I feel for them. Where it's like at first you're like Joe Exotic, the, who's the main character, um, who this is all about. And he goes to jail for 22 years and so forth. You think like he's going to be the bad guy. But really, plot mm-hmm. to- no, Oh, my God. No <laughs> spoilers. spoilers. <laughs> It's not. It's a matter of fact. But st- I haven't un- watched it. Un- it's not spoilers because that's just how the portrayal comes off once you watch the series. It's not all a right, matter of right. fact. It's up to interpretation. Okay, okay. Yeah, Yash, you have to watch it, man. I need to watch it. I'm going to binge awesome. watch it today. Y'all been reading any uh, books, though? Me? Oh, no. I love books. All right, which ones? Well, okay, so I, I love John Green, so I was rereading Paper Towns. Uh-huh. And I'm like, we're literally almost at the end. And I'm like, I'm like dying to know what happens because I don't, I forgot the ending. So, and then I'm also reading um, Kite Runner for English that we don't have to, we don't have to work on anymore, but I still read it. So yeah, still I'm good still book. still reading it. Yeah, it's a super good book. I would recommend it. That's awesome. Do, you, do y'all have like goals, quote unquote, other than like school for this quarantine? Yes, kind of. <laughs> what, is, what is it so i've i've always been like a writer and so i wrote like very a lot of unfinished novels and so i'm kind of going back to those novels and like rewriting them or like adding stuff to it but because i got inspiration like as soon as like my, my cousins left and i was alone and everything it was like 12 a.m like i was on my bed I was like I need to do something productive and so I opened like one of my really old novels that I wrote and I started rewriting it and then um I've been doing that for a while now too 
that's nice same here but with music just kind of opening uh my guitar case back up playing my guitar and writing lyrics i feel like for some reason quarantine has made me a lot more like creatively uh made inclined. you poetic yeah i don't know why <laughs> it's kind of <laughs> weird exactly no but like i totally agree with that too because like i don't know why it's just like when i'm alone at night i just have like the best thoughts like mm -hmm. it's either very depressing or very good <laughs> you know like it's either like a lot of inspiration or a lot of depressing moments like you know so it's like mm -hmm. but nowadays it's been like um more inspiration so i either watch a movie on netflix if i'm not feeling inspired at night or i just um i just write that's nice Abby, what about you um, I don't know about goals necessarily because, I mean, I just, I, I just don't want to do online school, honestly. And like with the quarantine and everything, I just lost so much like motivation to like really push myself and so forth. And it doesn't help being like a senior where it's like, you only have like two months left of schooling where you're just like, uh, I don't know if I really want to do this. <laughs> you think it as like, you almost think of it as more of an optional kind of thing, which it's not. But mm -hmm. of course, still thinking about that. But maybe, let me think. I would say maybe. Hmm. Like inspiration or like make another like case Y segment or something. Oh, well that's, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. let me talk about that. Okay, so. <laughs> Before all of this started happening, before we left for break, um, this year I was pretty much overlooking and overseeing everything to do with KCUI new members, which is their first year into the program, um, especially with a new teacher who is teaching it. So I was in there pretty much every day, um, occasionally teaching the class and helping everyone in all the different groups and making sure everything ran smoothly and that they were... Um, making sure that they were staying involved in our program, even though they were in a different classroom. And so they still had a connection. And so I was so used to that, keeping me busy, keeping me going and pushing me and, you know, forcing me to do these things and, you know, reach out and that kind of stuff, which I'm been, which I'm used to doing, but it kind of like um, kept me on a schedule or a routine, if that makes sense. Uh -huh. And so now going into break, I just, I just lost it. I don't have something that I have to be doing that like I'm responsible for. Um, and so recently I decided to reach out to more of the new members um, to help with stuff. And, you know, we're trying to get more coverage and more social media presence with KCBY since now we don't have, you know, our weekly shows. And so I'm trying to reach out more. And like, like last night I was reaching out to a few people um, that were new members to see if they wanted to work on something for social media or story, anything like that. And they responded and like all of a sudden I get this like my heart starts pumping and I just get so excited. And it brought me back to it's like this is this is what I meant to do. Like this is what I've been doing. And I feel like that is like pushing me towards the routine that I need right now. Where it's like I'm being held responsible for other people. And so it's up to me to wake up, get up and start doing these things um, in order to keep me going instead of having no responsibilities and no, no one, you know, being dependent of you where you can just lay in bed and do nothing all day. So if that makes sense, you know, finally having that a little bit more of a drive going forward <laughs> within quarantine to really like actually want to do things. Mm -hmm. Now, I understand how you feel because, you know, I see like the podcast as, as pretty much my routine since it's weekly. Mm -hmm. It's it's kind of like my baby, basically, a 44th episode. And whenever quarantine first hit, I was like, what am I going to do? Because, you know, we record at uh, the Cosby Library. Most of our stuff, you know, we have a nice mic and all mm -hmm. that was stripped away. You know, now we're using Zoom, which is fine. But I understand how that feels to like have these things stripped away. And for that, like for like two weeks or so, you were just kind of there like, what the heck's going to happen? And then, mm -hmm. as you said, you know, you start falling back into into place and, and getting that routine uh started up again very important very very good yeah um for me it was more like um so i was gonna make a short film with a couple of my friends mm -hmm. Yash. Yeah. um <laughs> and so <laughs> that kind of stopped like i made i like had these ideas they kept changing 
and then I wrote like a couple scenes and it was just like oh my god like I'm so excited for this and then like we were gonna have like the cameras and everything and to make it more professional because we were me and Yash were thinking about making it more like of a phone kind of thing but like we wanted to be professional and so after the quarantine and like we obviously don't have access to the cameras and so it kind of took got like taken away from me because like I love these little creative projects that I can really show like my creativity um and it was just like stripped away from me mm-hmm. but right now in KCBY um I'm working um I'm working with three other people who are a part of like the social media team I'm helping them um we have like almost like daily 11 a.m zoom calls and we just talk about what we can do to make KCBY better and um I'm making my own little segments I'm trying to make segments that are very positive because I know right now is a very very hard time for a lot of people um and so I made this little thing um because spring is here so I kind of wanted to you know, uh, showcase that. Um, showcase that. Yeah, thank you, Ash. Mm-hmm. Showcase that spring is here, and like you can always look at the bright side of things. And even though like we're in quarantine, we can still go outside in our backyard and front yard. And if you don't have a backyard and front yard, you could just go outside from your house, from your apartment, whatever, mm-hmm. and look at the nature that's been like like blooming right now because spring is here, and spring is one of my favorite seasons. So. Like right now, like blue bonnets are like out, you know, like blue bonnets only come during this year and they're my favorite flowers and I'm not able to see them and it really makes me sad. So I decided to make a little flower segment and I'm making a mental health segment because I think positivity is a lot like really important right now. Definitely, definitely. And I like that, you know, people have been taking that, that approach to quarantine, the kind of checking up on people seeing if they're okay and as you said even just uh, like standing outside of your house and just admiring what's around you I don't know I, I like that and I feel like that that could help a lot of people right now especially because yeah it, it just seems to be a very negative time you know on the news we see if, if you tune in basically every headline is is, is something terrible so yeah uh, everything yeah. is about the virus and everything it's kind of annoying at this point Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. just how sad it is right it is really sad and just yeah it's overall it's just depressing so like, yeah exactly. some positivity but like when we think about it we're like living in such a because i'm living like we're all living right under like a like a roof we're all we all have food we have water we can go to kroger and buy as much as we want even during this time and so it like it kind of like really makes me upset that we're set we're doing so well like our lives are so perfect yet we still are so like complaining that we're like at home but like we're under like air conditioning where like we have food we're eating you know but like there's so many people out there who are homeless who are like literally on the street and can't do can't do what we're doing like can't like watch netflix or just spend their time like we are doing right now and it's so like it's so upsetting that those people have already like been on the streets but like during this time it's super scary for them because they're in the streets where they were more exposed and so I just always think about other people and how what they're going through and I always am like I'm so thankful that I'm like so privileged to have a house to have food no matter what you know Mm -hmm. talking about privilege and everything we had prom this year at the AT&T stadium which was like really expensive and like and it got canceled like it got canceled like two weeks before we were actually supposed to go so what are your what are your thoughts on it I hate that it got canceled I personally think it should have gone postponed until further notice kind of thing because I say, okay, second year, because last year was the first year that they ever had the prom at the AT&T Stadium, and so we would have had year number two this year. And so I understand it's getting canceled, blah, blah, blah. But how about we just go old school, save some money, still have the prom experience, and just go in the arena? Any decorations that were already bought, or if not, get some Coppell moms together. The magic of Coppell moms, man, when they come together, <laughs> work wonders. They can get anything done if you tell them what you want. And it's for their kids. Oh, my God, they're on top of it. <laughs> like, we could have archways. Oh, my God. God, from top to bottom, the arena will be decorated. We could even, they would even create a platform for the DJ. 
Like mm -hmm. we would have stuff set and like the small gym can be with the food and everything is. And then the other big gym can be for overflow. Like we have everything at our fingertips. It's just whether or not we're going to do it or not. And I just really, I just, I just don't want it to be over. Like, it's like it's such a high school experience like I've been waiting for prom for over a year now and I literally when my dress came in the mail right when they sent the email that prom got canceled and uh, yeah I was like oh I hate this <laughs> I just want it to be rescheduled and let's just go old school and have it in the gym that's all I'm saying here. but do you think that's gonna happen though no not at all I don't think it's going to happen. However, Miss Springer, um, the, the video that she sent out to seniors last night, because it was prom, it would have been prom. In her video, the stuff she was talking about and everything, it seems like she's still going to try to make something work. Yeah. I don't know about her prom. I know for graduation, she said, whether we can gather or not, we're going to make it work. And so I was like, I'll be interested to see what that you know, solution is. But no, I just I want there to be something for prom. I think Miss Springer's on on our side in this one. I feel like she's gonna do. Oh some, yeah. She's. I feel like she's gonna do something to this. Have make us make that prom experience for us, even if it's not go to the AT and T Stadium. Yeah, she for hinted real. at something. She she was like, you know, we we could, we're still gonna have some sort of a little event that we can say we can all say goodbye to each other, basically. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, because she has her thing of, uh, at the last day of school. Like, especially when she was at East. Oh, my God. So, last year, when it was her last year at East, she has I, – I was literally there in the building seeing it happen before my eyes. And I was like, oh, my God, this woman, like, I've never met her before that day. And I was like, I've heard only great things about her, right? And when I saw it in front of my eyes taking place, I was like, it's all true. Like, it is all true. She has the tradition at the last day of school, all the eighth graders line up in the hallway and she gives a hug to every single eighth grader and by Aww. even in the middle she was crying everyone was sweating because all the parents were there so there was like no airflow <laughs> but <laughs> everyone was just bawling their eyes out and I was just like oh my god to have that kind of an effect and influence on people is insane but like it she's just so amazing just mm -hmm. who she is as a person what she's gone through and like what she brings it's just it just blows me away sometimes. Like, it's almost I like agree. being starstruck. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, like, I'm, I've known her because I was in East Lang. So I went to East in sixth grade. So I knew her in sixth grade. And it was so crazy how, like, I was so happy when I was like, oh, my God, Miss Springer is coming back to CHS. And I was like, I was, I like, know. kind of, like, I was surprised. But then, um, so for KCBY, we did, like, an interview, like, to her like um in dr jen's office last year which is now her office obviously um and she looked at me she's like i know you i recognize you i know i don't know your name but like i knew that i couldn't say it when i knew you in like east and then um i like hugged her and i told her my name and she was like oh my god i remember you and then she kept hugging me Aww. and after that time literally i am in the springer like hug withdrawal draw i can't talk withdrawal or whatever like i need her hugs like i kind of because like whenever i would hug her like all my stresses would go away and she just brought like a positivity in my life like a positive person in my life that i really needed so it's crazy how I can't see her. And like yesterday's video literally made me cry. Yeah, it was pretty rough. That, that whole message was just so sad because I know how much mm -hmm. it's affecting like our teachers and just seeing her, you know, like the face of CHS kind of being very vulnerable, very honest with us. It just kind of made me even more sadder than I already was. Yeah, and for prom, like I wasn't going to go, but like I was looking forward to seeing pictures of my friends, obviously, mm -hmm. and just like... Because I personally, like, I didn't really, like, I don't really like the idea of prom. It's just, like, kind of extra, you know? Like, I, I don't know. That's just the kind of person I am. Like, I, well, first of all, I can't really go because parents. But second of all, like, I just <laughs> didn't, I didn't, I, did, I didn't find, like, dancing, you know, as fun or whatever. So, like, I wasn't going to go anyway. But, like, I was planning to pick, take pictures with my friends and that got canceled. And it's just, like, 
I don't have like that memory, you know, like because I'm someone who always takes pictures of literally everything and then like looks after that, like looks at them after like a couple of years. Mm-hmm. And so now I'm not gonna have those pictures to look at when I'm like about to graduate college, like you know. So that makes me really upset. But um, other than like I, but I like, I feel for the seniors who are so looking forward to prom because it's like senior prom, it's their last year, it's their last like little like big event before graduation. So. Mm-hmm. No, to, to add some fire to the nostalgia train like describe some of your favorite senior year moments and how they ended up shaping you oh gosh oh wow um do you want ooh, me to okay. cry <laughs> <laughs> i mean that would create better content <laughs> I, like oh my god like congrats <laughs> you did your job oh god okay you go first tabby okay thank you um <laughs> okay I would say, so over the past four years, I've been involved with the band, the band program at CHS, and it has, band in general, since I started in sixth grade till now, has shaped me to who I am today, whether that's, you know, towards my work ethic, my leadership ability, and what I truly am capable of, and how I see myself, and Mm -hmm. this last year as a senior, Um, It wasn't a state year, so it was a little bit less stress, but that means one less performance when you get down to San Antonio. And you work so hard on your marching show from August, well, actually before August, because we get music around April, Mm -hmm. and then auditions are in May, and then you have all the summer to practice. Then the actual season starts with summer band camp um, in August or really like the last week of July. And so from August to November is your season, just a few months, just a few months. Mm -hmm. And you work so hard in all the different types of elements that Texas weather hands you. And you get to the end, your last day, we get a countdown. And you, you don't know what performance is going to be your last. But once it is, and you realize you're waiting for the scores, you're, wait, you're counting on your fingers, waiting to, see, to hear them say Coppell High School. Mm-hmm. And you get all the way down to number 12. And they, you don't hear your name being called. And you, you, like your heart just drops where yeah. you're just like, you've worked so hard for this. And you felt so confident in everything. And you were on that field, giving it your all, performing your heart out to this audience that didn't feel the same. The judges did not feel the same. And it sucks because all we wanted to do, we, didn't, we, weren't, we wanted to break 90 this season because we were so confident in ourselves, which we, we did good. We are really good. We are a good marching band program and a band program in general. But we couldn't break 90, which is getting a score, because Kapo has never broken 90 as, like, their marching band score before. Mm-hmm. And we didn't really care about our score as much as we just wanted to perform one last time. We just wanted to perform one more time so one more audience, one last audience could see the show, New Realism. And walking out of the stadium, walking out of the Alamo Dome, pulling out of the parking lot heading home is when it hits where you're just like it's over and you everyone in the bus on the way home oh my god everyone was just crying at different times like we were just crying and I was just like "Mm." (laughs) I was like just crying because I was like it's over like this is the last time I will be marching on and off the field with this group of people in marching band are my strongest memories of high school and they are the most important to me I obviously there's other singular moments throughout you know the four years that have shaped me and you know have an effect on me but marching band overall like that has shaped me so much as a person and those memories like just thinking about it like I at the end of the year we have senior wills for your band which probably won't happen this year which sucks, where we, like, you know, seniors pass down to underclassmen certain things or, you know, job duties, responsibilities. Mm-hmm. And I felt like once getting to senior wills, I would just start bawling my eyes out because I'm like, 
I don't want to say goodbye. Like, you know, and uh, I don't know. What was the original question? <laughs> <laughs> no, thank you for sharing with us. That's, thank you for being very honest and open. Yeah. I just don't want it to be the end. That's it. Like, I, I just don't want it to be the end. I'm not ready. I'm like, I, it's like with all these closures and everything and the potential of seriously, like not going back to school at all as like a senior, you're just like, I, I have no closure, you know, like mm -hmm. I haven't been able to say my goodbyes properly and I just don't want it to be the end. Wow. Oh, well, mama, what about you? Okay, well, so last year I had a lot, not a lot, but like I had, um, most of my friends were seniors and they always told me to like really um, enjoy like the last year of high school because you're never going to go there again. You're never going to have like your friends in your the hallways and you're just going to see someone and you're like, oh, hi, you know, like obviously college has like friends and stuff, but like you base some of, some people have basically lived in Kapow for most of their lives and it's it's weird to like let all those people go um and so like it was it's just sucky that like i was looking forward to like senior awards senior skip day um ksby banquet other things like that and it just really sucks how i can't we can't go through that anymore um this entire like in the beginning of the year kind of i didn't really like think of myself as a senior like obviously I was but then when it really hit me was senior uh senior pep rally where it was like Miss Springer and like all like the like the Duco was like oh like this is our last pep rally ever and it was like oh gosh I am a senior I'm never gonna go through a pep rally ever again it kind of mm -hmm. like hit me um and then just like little moments where it's like now that I don't have like lunch with my friends or like looking at like seeing my friend in the hallways or just like going to class and seeing like always like seeing that person I always like look forward to in that class I don't talk to as much but whenever I do talk to them in that class it's like I've known them forever so it's like those little moments that like I really miss right now and it's really sucky that I'm not going to be able to go through them most probably again um, but I just, I was, like, looking forward to, like, the last two months of high school, and I was, like, I'm actually gonna, like, you know, use them to my, like, the most of my ability because of what my senior friends told me last year to always cherish the little moments, but now that freaking coronavirus has taken it away from me, it's just, like, what now, you know? <laughs> like, how am I gonna say goodbye properly? And also, KCBY, like, it's been a very big thing in my life for the past two years because like I love film I love writing I love journalism so it was like a lot of like 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 I'm not going to be able to make something for a senior show like I don't even know if senior show is going to happen and like that was something I was looking forward to too because like I it was like a formal goodbye like I remember watching last year's senior show and like literally crying and I I'm like I was like Oh, I, I was, like, thinking while watching this new show, I was like, how is next year's going to be? Like, how are we going to say farewell to KCBY, you know? So it's just, like, the little things that it's just, like, gone away from me that don't seem real. That's so true, though. But, like, with senior show, like, I was, as a senior in KCBY, you look forward to two shows in the year. Pacemaker, which is the second to last show, and senior show, which is the very last show. Mm -hmm. because those, pacemaker those yes pacemaker is how you leave your mark on the program and you know the future you know but the senior show is how you leave your mark as a person as the senior class to so not only the school but also to kcby where you can showcase you have the freedom to do anything to you know look and consider and talk about and reflect or whatever about your memories that you've made while you were here and how you grew up together and how you worked together and how, you know, created this family. And without that, it's kind of hard where, yes, you know, you can make those connections and those relationships with people within the program and mentor them and help them and talk to them, whatever. But not everyone is going to remember you in 10 years because they don't have a show to remember you by because everyone graduates. Everyone, you know, grows up and moves on. Miss K will always remember us. But 
it's not it's not the same like obviously we love Miss K and it's we want her to remember us like everyone deep down wants their teachers to remember you or at least for most of us and I know that's you know Miss K is going to remember all of us and you know how great we were but it's one of those things where you just want more people to watch you want more people to see what you're capable of you know does that make sense yeah definitely Uh, that is honestly very rough you know we the psychic switched to a a digital format we still have our our issues but they're just going to be done digitally but we, we know we understand how that feels to to have most of 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 what your program stood for completely ripped away because pretty much our our beat as you would say our our what we focus on is the school itself <laughs> you know we can't go to the school and that's where the stories would happen our photographers and our writers would go out in the halls we would try to find stories and this change has been completely shifted what the way that we kind of i guess you would say approach stories i don't know i mean that that's its own pro in a way but we totally understand how it feels like to have the program completely shift. It's just hard for everyone to adjust with, um, with this current situ- current situation. Exactly. Yeah. The whole online only type. Yeah. Thing. Um, it seems like Corona, the coronavirus will end up shaping this decade. What advice do you have to give yourself in order, in order to keep your head in the game during these troubling times? Well, I, Right now, I'm just, like, like, second semester of senior year has just, like, been really happy for me, finally. And so, right now, I don't really want to ruin it. So, what I'm telling myself is that everything happens for a reason and that rejection is protection. And, like, I, so I've always been, like, a believer of God. And so, I wanted to, like, it's, it's, rejection is God's protection. So, God always has a better way for you um and there's always like light on um at the end of the tunnel and so right now obviously it's very hard right now and like things are just really weird but i tell myself that everything's gonna be fine in a couple of months from now i know like senior year is taken away from me everything that i was looking forward to was taken away from me but like i don't let that affect me anymore and i just say this was meant to happen let's just wait until like life is better again you know I just always look forward to the future because that's that's what's ahead of me, you know. You can't keep getting stuck in the past. Exactly. Yeah. Because that's when it really just like if you get stuck in the past, it really just affects you. Like Mentally. takes personally, a bigger toll on you. Yeah. Personally, I've been through that where like I always just think about my past and then I get really upset and then it it it's no it's not worth it because past is gone, you know, like. You're never gonna go back to your the time where you like yeah, you know, it's something happened. Control. It's out of your control, and everything happens like like I said, everything happens for a reason. So now you can like learn from your mistakes and just like you know, just be positive because like right now it's a very hard time. Like I said, being positive is everything, and just like thinking of the positives in life is a lot. Um, it's really good for you. So just just like just put your keep your head up and say like that the future is going to be better. I'm going to be fine. Everything will be okay eventually. And like everything happens for a reason and that things happen, bad things happen and then good things happen. I would say for me, from my perspective, for me personally, I'm much more of a realist um, in comparison. So I know that if I'm constantly just trying to think positive things, and, you know, positive reinforcement, whatever kind of thing, I'm just going to go crazy because I feel like I'm lying to myself <laughs> where it's like I have to be like, this is the reality now. This is what's going to come to us. This is what's, you know, going to come our way. I can't be thinking of the past. I cannot be thinking of the, the future. I have to be thinking of the present to keep me grounded to keep me a little bit more sane or it's like this is what I am con- in control of and this is what I can do and so I have to going forward I have to keep my spirits up and have to find forms of motivation so that I push myself to go forward instead of constantly like staying stagnant or complacent and so I have to find motivation in the things that used to motivate me the most before all this happening and I lean on KCBY for that, to have that, you know, 
as being in a leadership position, it's your job to motivate others and to be there for others and to help mm-hmm. them um, ahead of your own. So you, you put them as priority before yourself, which is what I do. And to not have that made me get a little bit lost. It kind of made me feel like I was floating around and I wasn't sure. I was like in limbo. And then I finally got back to that routine, back to those things. And I'm like, this this is what I need to do to keep myself sane and to keep myself moving along the river so I don't keep getting caught. Okay, so like at first it was very hard because like we obviously weren't expecting this quarantine. But then after that, I was like, I need to get myself up again, you know? Mm-hmm. So like I, I totally understand what you were saying, Tabby. Like it was weird not having the things that really like I looked forward to, but like at the, at the end I was like I have to deal with it like I know what's happening and I'm always like someone who looks forward to the future because I'm like what will the future hold for me but like I'm also someone who always looks at the now too so I get what you mean Tavi. Man to, to kind of last question to end this off and kind of going back to high school if y'all had a chance to talk to the entirety of next year's senior class what would you tell them? Enjoy the little things and just like like, live each moment like it's your last. Because, like, we didn't you know that literally the last day of school was the day before spring break. And we were, like, going into spring break super excited. Like, oh, we have yeah. a week off, you know? But we didn't know we were never going to go back to school again. And so just, like, live e- every moment of your senior, like, like every, like, what is it called? I can't talk. What is it called? Where it's, like, every, like, major event in your senior life like live every moment of that too but also like the little like moments of just being at school and like Mm -hmm. walking the hallways and going to class because we lost that opportunity to do that for the last two months of our high school career um and so just just be thankful for what you have be thankful that you know you can walk those halls again if coronavirus goes away by that time, which I hope it does, and it probably will. Um, and just be very thankful for what you have because you never know when you're not going to have it anymore. I would say to the next, you know, the incoming senior class that experiencing this and having our senior year being cut short, you know, this quote has stuck with me because our band director, Mr. Miller, he has ingrained this to us every year, every marching season. You know, life is just 10% of what happens to you, but 90% of how you react to it. And I take that quote even more to heart in situations like this, where you're out of it, this is out of your control. But to the incoming senior class, your year is in your control as of right now. You know, going forward, if this, you know, they can go back to school and, you know, live their normal lives and enjoy every moment of it the awkward the weirdness the you know the embarrassment oh well it's your last year live it to you know live it to your fullest Mm -hmm. don't worry about the stress that it gives you because it'll be over eventually but the little moments the connections you can make with your teachers with your friends anything and everything just embrace it just enjoy it because it's your last year this is the last time that this is going to be happening for you. You're not going to see this exact group of people ever again. Because even down the line, if you have a high school reunion, not everyone's going to show up. You know, this is the last time you're going to see all these people. So enjoy the time that you have with them because you don't know how or how quickly it's going to be taken away from you. Uh, What I would say is kind of going off of what y'all said, but for sure to cherish the small moments um, I know that for some reason, I don't know why, that last week before spring break, I like, since I walked to school, I like took pictures of my walk and I, for the first time ever. And also like at my workplace that, you know, shut down as well. I also took pictures of just stuff there for some reason. And looking back and I'm like, whoa, <laughs> kind of coincidental because those are probably going to be like the last images I have of that specifically of when everything was quote unquote normal. So definitely uh, cherish the, the small moments and just kind of live in the moment um, and be yourself. <laughs> no, be yourself so is sad, like, but I completely agree. <laughs> yeah, be yourself is like the number one thing everyone needs to do. Yeah, number one. Don't be a fake person. 
Oh my god, oh, yeah. yes. Period. <laughs> Preach. Bro, bro, that's like the beneficial part about quarantine is like in the community in the world of TikTok, like this is the time that anyone can be anything and like there's no judgment because it's like we're all bored. So there's going to be someone out there who's exactly like you or very similar. So you're going to be able to put a smile on their face regardless of what you're trying to do. And it kind of opens your eyes where it's like, why did this have to happen for people to come together? Like, or yeah. want to reach out. This is your opportunity to get TikTok famous. <laughs> I mean, you're not wrong. So <laughs> we'll, we'll end it on that. <laughs> awesome. So thank you all for joining us in the 41st episode of the Penny Podcast. Links to some of the material we mentioned today can be found below. And see y'all next week.